Snow Owl. Hey. Nice to see you again, this time in London. Yeah, can you believe it, Lars? We finally met here. Again, again, <laughs> again. So you're here on tour uh, with the celebration of Hans Zimmer. Yes, the world of Hans Zimmer, and this is our third tour and our second time in London. Last time we were in Wembley. Now we have the, the Bolshoi uh, Belarusian Orchestra the, uh, that are joining us. It must be about maybe 70 people, but there's also choir. Altogether, I think it's 200 people traveling. Massive. So go, let's go back to the like eight or nine in a band, um, yeah. and then you stand in there and you're looking around. Look at all these people. How how do you have to adapt much to be in? Yeah, what I love about it is this: when you're playing in, in an eight band combo, right? Everybody has a specific range that they have to cover, right? But even though there's this entire orchestra that's there, it's the same game. If you look at you know the the brass section, they have a tuba. That's the bass player, right? You have the, the woodwinds, you have your contrabassoon, that's the bass player. So it's just different timbres of the same thing spread out over 70 people. So it's easy to adapt, being a composer myself, easy to adapt. The great thing about, about Hans Zimmer's music is literally the lowest frequency available to the highest frequency available, he'll compose for, right? And he's a great lover of bass. And giving us the artistic freedom as soloists uh, allows us to jump between roles of each instrument. So I can be supporting the cellos, I can be supporting the violas, I can be supporting the contrabasses or the brass. And the construction of the bass played a significant role in the blending process of that. I was able to tune in literally to the available frequencies that the cellos or double basses don't have from the bowing side. You know, that raspiness that comes out. And whatever was not there, so I don't, I'm not masking them, I was able to tune in with this and enhance it. So it's a fantastic marriage of the two worlds. We improvise as soloists a lot of the music. We have uh, introductions, we have solo features, and we have solo sections between all of us that we can always vary. And Hans uh, always encouraged us not to play what's on the paper. And I love that, so we really have a lot of freedom. Oh, great, That's, yeah. uh, that must be something. Yeah, that's a blast. So, you know, just going up again here where I've watched you, you're using effects on the floor to, to, yes. to change, what are you changing to, to get that high end? Oh, well, it's a absolutely. screaming guitar. It. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, a lot of a lot of it is a mixture of. Um, I've been using the the bias amp application on the iPad, just for the high sustain, high gain drive stuff, but also the the B7K from Dark Glass, with a designed uh, impulse response that I put in there, that allows me to create that room mic sound, high edge, high sustain, without having to have the the sacrifice of the room, the big halls, you know what I mean? I met Snow Owl two years ago when we met for the first rehearsals to prepare the show. And I entered the room and I looked, there was sitting somebody with a huge bass and I knew he was cool. And then we looked at each other and we heard ourselves playing and then we just knew we were on the same page. This is the third tour so far, and I think it, for us it has just started. So because everybody's really relaxed, really cool, very comfortable with himself, and, and I think that's the most important thing. When you're on tour, you need to make sure that the personality of um, every bandmate is really like a positive vibe otherwise. In the beginning, it's different because you're used to have a different exposure when you play and or maybe different lineup, but you get used to a beautiful and great sound so quickly Then once you don't have it, you start missing it. And it's just amazing to be soloing on top these amazing orchestral sections, either with a flamenco guitar or with the electric guitar. 
and so far I only had two experiences which was playing two of Vivaldi's um, concertos in the past but of course this lineup is so massive that the emotion behind you really pushes you forward and then your delivery becomes much more powerful. I have this beautiful intro, which is a very classic Spanish flamenco style, Taranta, that's what they call it. And then I have the Mission Impossible theme, which I really love playing. It's a, it's a very thrilling song and, and so many things happening through that song, yeah. I've been playing flamenco guitar since a little boy, so I have that one. Then in my teenagers, of course, I've started to hearing metals or electric guitars. I've got two electric guitars on stage. Then I have a nylocaster, which is basically a Strat with nylon strings, modified and customized by Ben Woods, a friend of mine in Los Angeles. Uh, I have a bouzouki, a Greek bouzouki, and I have the ukulele. I did recover my first electric guitar from when I was 14, and it was a Phoenix Strat by Young Chung. He, he used to be a manufacturer from Korea, and he used to build for Fender, I think Fender Japan or something. So whatever, that ended, and they never did any um, further models. And um, this guitar, when I bought it secondhand, um, it just like went to a cupboard of a friend of mine and I never saw it again. I recovered it eventually and I rebuilt everything, new frets, new wiring, new um, pickups, new bridge, and I'm on tour with my first electric guitar. For You've the, got it on tour yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah. That's a close to the heart guitar as we yeah. say. And then I have the flamenco guitar, which is my signature model, done by Jose Salinas. He's a guitar builder from, from south of Spain, Andalusia. And we've been working on these shapes, on these measures, woods that are like cedar tops, uh, which make like a very nice, warm sound, but still powerful. My latest recording, yeah, it's a flamenco solo album, and it's called Andalusia. It will be released in February. And basically it's a journey through Andalusia and the different regions. And each song I composed is dedicated to either Seville or Granada or Cordoba. And um, in some of the um, cases, some of the songs are the actual style of each region. And some of the songs is just like a music that I recorded, that I invented or created for that particular That's region. That's great. Is it just you solo? Have you got any guests on there? Um, I invited Snow Owl. Uh, to have um, to record two basses uh, on two tracks, and then there is an amazing gypsy flamenco singer from Malaga. And the rest I did record, I recorded all the other um, uh, guitars and bazookis, ouds. I have a guy from Cadiz, Katumba, Israel Katumba, an amazing percussionist. Lots of music, lots of like different sounds and emotions, that's a good thing. Tell me about the bass now, I'll look at it, six string monster. There she is in London, right there, the Phoenix bass. Contrabass guitar designed by Andreas Neubauer and myself. We were uh, celebrating already 11 years of working together. And this first Snow Owl bass that we had designed was a neck through body design. And I wanted always to do a bolt on version of the this bass. This is a bolt on? Then. This is a bolt on. I mean, I can turn it around a little bit here. You can see that on the camera, oh. maybe there. That's an extremely gorgeous design by Andreas, and we used alder, ash, and pear woods to create this masterpiece. But the, the emotional element of this space is very special and very dear to me, and also for Andreas, because he had a, an episode of throat cancer that he was really, really fighting with. He did not 
do any guitars for one year. He didn't do anything. He was completely uh, in the hospital dealing with the chemo. And towards the end of the treatment, I said to him, why don't we design finally our bolt-on, you know, anniversary, 10-year anniversary bass, right? And I witnessed a process which is indescribable. Every day that we worked on this bass, we worked on it for two months together. Every day that he worked on it and it was being born, it was as if he was being reborn. And he, he started healing during the process of building this instrument. Wow. And that's how we got the name, the, the Phoenix, to rise out of the ashes. Fantastic. And that's literally how it happened uh, for him. And he's fully healthy now. But the instrument uh, and the friendship and the love, that, that brought him out of it. And that, that's what's so special every time I play this instrument. We've actually got two pickups right here. You can switch from single coil to humbucker, right? One here and one here. I love the placement because I prefer to play in this area of the bass. And, and I, I can play here as well, which is nice, a smoother tone. But for some reason, my hands always, because of the size of the instrument and the muting, is such a challenge that it tends to sit right here. You know this what is I mean? active? This is active. And they are uh, Harry Heusel pickups from Germany. That's right. Very good, yeah. The, ele the electronics is also custom, and we have kind of a secret piezo microphone hidden in there somewhere that I'm not allowed to reveal. But we can hear it. <laughs> we can hear it, but we mustn't talk about it. Right, exactly. And Indeed. we've got a little snow owl on the headstock. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Andreas is always adding these little details. I've got three snow owl bases, right? And uh, the choice of woods for those help me for different colors, but it's always a contrabass guitar. The other thing that I've used uh, a few times is if, I, if you need a fretless, then I've gone with the classic Fender, Fender Jazz, you know, fretless sound, and the occasional P bass, which is always a joy to smack around. This puppy's going to cover everything. Yeah, it, it covers everything pretty Was much. Was this one on your award-winning Blue Road album? On the Blue Road album? Yeah. No, what was on the on the Blue Road album was the, the first Snow Owl bass. And at the very end of Blue Road, when we finished the last, the last, uh, there was an orchestral piece, then I had the Phoenix with me, yes. They, they just go back to the Blue Road, that won several awards, doesn't it, in LA? Yes, yes, yes. We were, we were blessed that there was one particular song the title was uh, She Became a Thousand Birds. And it, it, there was a horrible tragedy in Colombia in 1985, 1986, where there was a volcanic explosion and thousands of people passed away. And I wanted to write sort of a protest song to make the Colombian government have more disaster prevention ready in those, in those areas of Colombia. And the song, even the video, the music video, the animation video, was featured in the Cannes Film Festival, and we won multiple film festivals awards for that song. And what's so touching is the power of music that we can bring awareness to help the common man with with such a message of tragedy. And, and it, I'm still impressed how, how people have received that album.